Welcome to Real Black Consciousness Forum Podcast. Thanks for listening and remember to like, share, and comment on the content. Hit that notification tab, so you will know when new content has been uploaded. And now your host, Big VJ. Yes. Yes. Yes, beloved. Welcome back to Real Blank Contest Forum Podcast. Beloved, this is your brother, Big VJ, is definitely checking in, right? Today's conversation, we're going to talk about our brother Ice Cube. And we're going to read an article. Of course, like we always do, the article that we read from. We are going to put it in the description link so you can check it out yourself. But we're going to go through it here. So, you know, that's the way we're going to just do it here today. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about justice. Right. The Department of Justice, the judicial system. Right. Because the NBA is involved. And supposedly... The Department of Justice is looking into the Small Hat Basketball Association, right? We think it's cap. You know what I'm saying? Because if Satan is divided against Satan, how can his house stand? You know, in the NBA, beloved, we know have a very big presence because um, the headquarters is coming right out tri-state area right they got one headquarter office in new jersey and the other headquarters in new york new york and to be frank beloved we just don't see it (laughs) beloved we just don't see it because just the, the whole thing about justice in america you know justice in america it doesn't really go together you know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's just not a, it's not a, a a match made in heaven. It's not a, it's not a couple that you see together in union, in covenant, in promise. You know, America hand in hand with justice. It just, it just never seems to work out that way, right? But I will give you a few examples of what justice looks like in America, right? Cameron D. Cruz, if you can remember, he was the former officer. He was accused of killing Michael Dean, right? And he went to jail and he's home. You know why he's home? Because, beloved, that's what justice looks like in America. Andrew Delkey, who accepted that plea deal and he served three years after shooting and killing Daniel Hambrick. He's at home. Probably watching the game or getting ready to watch the game or put something on the grill because that's justice in America. The officer that killed Laquan McDonald. He did three years and he's home. Because this is justice in America. So, you know, um, that's the country that we live in. This is the country that we pay taxes to. This is the country that we are citizens of. Justice in America. You know, um, you can go down to the judicial system and you can kill 10 and 15 and 20 folks because just to think man those officers is at home and um the young talented brother uh from canada what's the kid with the the pushback hairline he's a good artist the the hairline is a little funny though he's from toronto he shot the the uh the young sister in the foot tory lanes now tory lanes is doing 10 years right for shooting somebody in the foot but the officers that put you in the grave, they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be protecting you, serving you, and they get paid off your tax dollars. They're at home. Right? But this is American justice. You know what I mean? 
the NBA headquarters, like I was saying earlier, is in Jaime Town. We know they got the other one in New Jersey, but that's just probably, I don't know, something to do. They kind of got these, uh, you don't know what the taxes is. They trying to do this and do that. To, like, who really knows? This, they're tricksters. But again, the headquarters is in Jaime Town. And um, when you go to the Department of Justice website, the U.S. Attorney Office, the Southern District of New York, you don't really see them messing with the NBA or have no kind of like track record of dealing with the uh, the hockey league or the baseball league or no professional sports league. But you will see the headline of uh, NBA player Keon Dooling and Allen Anderson. They got sentenced to 24 to 30 months in prison for defrauding NBA players health and welfare benefit plan and you just know just thinking how these folks work you know this office of government is so airtight that if they was investigating a matter that i don't really think it would be out like that you don't know what what hit you until it hit you um the devil sean farrell who's the section officer he's the section chief over the antitrust division in the uh, United States Department of Justice, the New York office, you look at his track record and he don't. So I'm just trying to say, like, well, who leaked the story? If it was a real leak at all, if somebody called and asked a couple of questions and because no, you don't see these folks operate like that. You know, before you know it, it's some, oh, we just investigating. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> We're going to read an article, but Belen, I just look at the background of the people that, you know, these small hats, historically, right? If we just deal with history. So you're dealing with the people that have been put out of 113 nations. Let's just put that on the table first. You didn't hear me? You was too far in the back? Don't worry about it. Your brother VJ will say it again. The NBA, the majority of all the owners, they're small hats. The commissioners, the small hats, because we used to have, uh, you got Adam in it now, and I was, I came up in the era where David Stern was in charge. But for the most part, the owners are all, they're all small hats. And they're, it's like everybody's a billionaire now. You know, Bomber, you know, the small hat that owns the Clippers. He's like the richest NBA owner of all time. His net worth is like $78 billion. Then Rob come behind him, who's over the Grizzly. He got like $17, $18 billion. He's only 36 years old, right? He's the youngest owner in the NBA. And then, of course, we got uh, Dan Gilbert, because we know Dan from LeBron. Uh, well, we know him because he's from Michigan. You know, he does a lot. He does a lot, pardon me, in downtown area. He on almost everything downtown Detroit. You know, Dan Gibber, that is. But the world knows him from his back and forth that he had with our brother, LeBron James. And he got national attention with LeBron, went to Miami and all this, and he was upset and this and that and the third. And he went to sleep or said he was a billionaire, and he woke up, he still was a billionaire. So, <laughs> these are all billionaire problems. There's a rule of thumb, though, that black entertainers is going to live by, in my estimate, in America. And if you notice, there's a track record. They either let you have a bunch of money, or you can have a company that's really not making no money. But normally, if you have a successful company that's making a lot of money, and you have a lot of money, you're going to, you're going to part with one of them. They're either going to figure out a way to take you from the money, which is jail. You find yourself all of a sudden in jail, some scandal, some something. And then the money start disappearing. Or they come to you with a big bag and they try to buy your company. Or in our brother's Ice Cube case, you know, I'm glad he's a victory owner. He got a great vision and everything. But his business partner, his co-founder, the guy that's sitting in the passenger seat for now is a small hat. Jeff. And then I just see our brothers do that so much. And when you see that over time, it's like the small hat always end up with the business when it happens. Go ask Russell Simmons. 
he had two partners both of them were small hats and somehow russell got pushed out the way and leroy kept the company <laughs> it's like having like that all the time um that's just how it works you know bob aram got top rank i can remember when muslims own that black muslims own that mr muhammad's son used to own top rank boxing and then they was hanging around with a small hat he put his foot in the door first and they they go from the back seat and then they move up from the back seat to the passenger side and then they move from the passenger side to the driver's side you don't you never get the company back to work today. but they play in the back first so you can just almost go down the line and see that every black owner that owned a company with a small hat something happened where the brother or the sister they get pushed out of the way and then the small hat comes in and then takes over the company but again you're dealing with the people that have been put out of they've been expelled kicked out pushed out 113 nations on the planet 40, 47 of which they got put out of in the last thousand years you, you understand what i'm saying which means that they're doing something these eastern european ashkenazis are doing something that is causing nation states to say we no longer want you in our jurisdiction the headline reads nba investigated over antitrust violations around two billion dollars worth big three what we know so far this is an article produced by ernest leo hernandez sports kita and let's see what they are talking about again i'm going to put the link up and you see adam is sitting on the photo with our brother ice cube and david stern was the small hat that tore down isaiah thomas league why didn't the department of justice look into that hmm the U.S. Department of Justice is investigating allegations against the NBA about the league trying to obstruct the growth of the Big Three Basketball League headed by rapper Ice Cube. Ice Cube is in the front. Right? I'm going to show you the scheme of the small hat. Right? Ice Cube is in the front. DD is in the front. Dr. Dre was in the front. <laughs> Russell Simmons was in the front. Nick Cannon, his company, Nick is in the front. Take a guess of who is in the back. <laughs> uh, it was a Spike Lee film, the Malcolm X film. And it's a setup where the brother to say, get your hand out my pocket. It was a it's a diversion. It's a setup. You out in the front. Who remember when they had Jay-Z out in the front? In Jaime Town out there in Brooklyn. Jay-Z out in the front. Some of you guys are pretty young, short memory. I don't forget it. I remember it. You know what I'm saying? You know, Jay out in the front, like he's the biggest owner from the Brooklyn next came from Marcy Projects. I worked my way up to the top. No, no, he was he, he worked his way up to the top, all right. He's in the front. <laughs> It was, it was a small head billionaire that's in the back, calling all the real shots and making everything happen. All them poor folks from Brooklyn had to get out of the way so that stadium could be built. Right? If you're from Chicago, take a look at what happened in Brooklyn and Harlem because you're next. They're bringing in migrants as we speak. These claims include accusations that the league discouraged sponsors from working with the Big Three and TV networks from airing their games. Ice Cube started the Big Three League in 2017, and it mainly featured retired NBA players who can still step on the court for a three-on-three basketball game. Despite the fact that both leagues don't overlap, the NBA allegedly set up rules preventing their players from participating in Cube's league especially in the offseason 
the way that they do that is they put it in your contract it's a clause so unless you had a uh, decent agent I won't say great unless you had a decent agent um, and they're putting your contract like the love of the game clause that Michael Jordan have he can play anywhere he wanted to play he can hoop he can do what he want to do but other players they couldn't do that they couldn't go to the Rutgers they couldn't play on small independent leagues because uh, the NBA owned them I mean it was just pretty much simple as that and they, they couldn't a good check so nobody wanted to mess up the check let's go down to um, you can see the tweet from Legion Hoops and right underneath that it says NBA owners have also been reported that they were discouraged by the league to investing in the big three tournament moreover Active league referees are discouraged from officiating in the big three. Yeah, that's interesting. Are we surprised? Our, um, no, maybe I should say it like this. You know, I had a conversation. And, of course, us and the family, we talked about something more biblical, right? Because, um... All is the mind and the universe is mental. All is the mind, all is the mind, right? The world is a stage and the men and women are just merely players on this world stage. So I'm gonna put you on, uh, I'm gonna put you on a hustle of how the world is working, right? I'm going to give you some free game, beloved. If you live in a, what they would call a Judeo-Christian society, and you are so-called black, right? That is your association. That is your identification, label, tag that is put on you. You're going to notice your people is going to be at the bottom, right? I say it again. If you so far on the back, you did not hear if you live in a nation on planet earth right (laughs) this nation is either a jewish ran society or country or nation state or a christian country nation state territory whatever you want to call it and that's the head of the government the blacks is going to be at the bottom in that place do you know why because the stage is being set by three biblical characters ham sham and yay and we talk about this all the time and the blacks fall underneath the ham character which means you're going to be at the bottom it is by design i know poor chop is not going to teach it to you this way i know you're not going to read about being conquered because when you go through the first covenant or the old covenant or the Old Testament, right? What you are really seeing is black tribes being dominated by Semitic tribes. That's all you're really seeing. They give you big characters in the story. They give you smaller characters in the story. But that's what's happening in the story. They're leaving from their homeland of Iraq, their father's home, because it's important that I say it this way. Because we had a lot of our brothers and sisters in the village who identified themselves as Hebrew Israelites. I love them. I respect them because we are in the same camp. The foundation of these Semitic people come from a country that we call today Iraq. This is where your whole family line and bloodline begin if you are a Hebrew. And they left their homeland. Well one namely abram and he got next to the blanks and in his heart he was promised that land by his deity and you lived it that's how the book pretty much begins at the very beginning i want you to cook on that i want you to, I want you to cook on that first once you understand how that works you will see how america works You will see how England works. You will see how Europe as a whole works. You will see how North America 
works united states and canada not mexico but like i said before if it is considered a christian nation or a jewish nation you are going to be at the bottom and they don't want you to have nothing and the minute you figure that out the better what about an islamic country it is the same because islam the way that prophet muhammad is working it is it just picks up where the bible leaves off and the characters are the same in both books they're not different so ham is the same in islam and ham is the same in the bible and you're him you're the heathen you're the spores of war you're the servant you're the slaves it is you that don't supposed to own anything and serve everybody the end <laughs> the end I can say it you know it's real but you can't say it because they put the fear of hell on you and the fear of Satan on you do you know how important Satan is to religion do you know how important it is you know how many times you hear a Muslim minister and a Christian minister, they, hey, brother, just have faith, man. If you get up, you know, you have faith. You can do this. You can do this. Okay. You can do all of this with the faith. Let's get together and let's all faith and let's ask God to get rid of Satan. And let's wait and see what happens. Watch pork chops start backpedaling. No, that can't happen. Can't happen. This guy's wicked. That guy's wicked. Put this person out to life. Negative energy this. Negative energy that. All right, let's just get rid of Satan. Can't happen. <laughs> you know, you know, I grew up, man. You know, as a child, you hey, we gonna bind this person. We're gonna bind, we're gonna put you down in the pit. I said, man, everybody, every church in the country done put the man in the pit. What's all this still going on? Well, you figure that out. You know what I'm <laughs> but beloved, maybe all that is a different story for a different day. The U.S. Department of Justice has been investigating these claims for months. Cube and his partner met with the DOJ lawyers along with a few active league owners who were contacted to participate in the investigation. If the allegations are proven to be true, the NBA could face significant fines. However, the league has denied these claims, saying that they have uh, supported the Big Three but chose but did not choose to invest in the three-on-three -three tournament. Both the DOJ and the Big Three have declined to comment on the ongoing investigation according to JMZ, right? Because we know the small hats own the TMZ brand. Uh, I right, check this out. How many of you guys can remember Donald Sterling? Who can remember Donald Sterling? He used to be the first owner of the Clippers. Right? Um, Donald Sterling was saying some things about our brother, Irvin Johnson. Right? And, uh, you know, more effectually known as Magic Johnson. Because Magic was around a young lady that Donald was dating. And then Donald said he was getting some calls Right, he was getting calls and calls telling him that it was inappropriate to have his old lady hanging around Magic. You dig what I'm saying? He said a few more things, and then he uh, he was forced to sell his team, and he became a billionaire quick, fast, and in a hurry. Right, that was his punishment for saying what they all think in in public. Right, if you go back and look at some of the um. The Donald Sterling interviews is the worst journalism ever because they asked him almost nothing. You know what the question that should have been asked should have been put on the table first? Who's calling you, Donald? Because you're a powerful person. At this time, you was a mega millionaire. So I, it's only a limited number of people that got access to you like that. And if people are calling you, which is just small hat buddies and family, saying that this looks improper 
then that's the real show that's going on. This is the real Semitic show that's going on behind the scenes. But the journalist, they weren't going to ask him that. Because he was a little old, he might would have said it. You know, you get when you get a little older, you can't keep it. It's a little harder to keep it together. You know what I'm saying? More older people, they just they just let it out. They say what the hell with it is. They say what they feel. If owners and powerful people in media and in sports is if they're calling and talking behind the scenes about somebody just sitting next to your girlfriend, you know they're talking to my nice kid. You know it. You don't have to think it. You know it. I remember when uh, there was a time that I believe the Cowboys was under investigation for something. You understand? And those stories, they come and they go just as fast. You dig? One of the Redskins owners was under investigation for something. The story come and it go. But anytime they do something improper and they're pushed out, they're pushed out with a bag of money. Not like you. You don't get pushed out of nothing with a bag of money. You go to no money when you get pushed out of something. It's kind of interesting how it worked with them. They always get pushed out and they fall on a bag of money when they get pushed out of anything that they are connected to. I always was curious about who was calling down. Who was calling them up? Who was hitting them up? Who was reaching out to you? They don't want magic to succeed. Magic is a hammite. The hammite ain't got no business next to your girlfriend. They don't want Ice Cube to succeed. Ice Cube is a hammite. I keep telling y'all, man, to get a toll med. I keep telling you, get a toll med. I keep telling you. I'll do you one better. There was a cold Caribbean brother from back in the day. His name was Tony Martin. And he had a book called The Jewish On Slot. Start there. Just start there. And then from there, you will see, because some things that when you hear me speak, I'm just speaking what the elder to say. I'm not saying nothing new. Because Big Mama already said, well, if it's new, it ain't true. So I don't come here and tell you nothing new. When I start saying some things, elders have already, ancestors have already said what I said. That's why it can connect with you because you heard it before. And you're like, man, you know what? Mama and daddy and them did used to say that. No, all we got to do is just put it in action. We'll leave it there. Right, we come back to the story. We'll see what the follow up is. You know, I'm assuming nothing. Because the only prediction I got about the big three, beloved, is a very, very unfortunate prediction. And that is that uh, if Cube have that league in 10 years, he'd be lucky. Because as long as Jeff is just sitting on that side, man, I don't, I don't trust him like that. Abraham, right? Father Abraham. Father Abraham sat next to black folks. Listen to me now. In, in, in his heart now, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in their hearts, they live amongst black folks, black tribes, black family, nations, everybody. And in their heart, they say, you know what? We're going to get this land one day. While you were living on the land, while you were going to the schools and playing games and learning, and building culture. <laughs> Look, black folks don't even know the oldest city on the planet is Jericho. And it was yours. And they took it. Now, why come we don't talk about that on Black History Month? Because Pastor Pochop is scared to tell you that this is your... <laughs> He's scared he can't go tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm your brother. I'm going to tell you. Hey, man. Listen, when you start talking about black history, the oldest city on the whole planet is a city named Jericho. Guess who was the original founders and owners of that land? What happened to the land? You don't have it no more. So what happened? Take a guess who took it from you. <laughs> if they don't want you to have Jericho, they don't want you to have nothing. They don't want you to have nothing. I'm saying all of this to say they don't want you to have nothing. <laughs> don't you see? You don't have no friends. You don't have any friends on the planet. So, 
our religion is marriage you have to keep your family unit together because you can't do you can't do that with these people they're sitting next to you just to take what you got and then they write a book about it and then you will read the book with some tambourines playing in the back with some organs playing in the back with some hooping and hollering and you will celebrate how somebody took something from you and then you look up to date and wonder why you have nothing you agree but hopefully it won't always be that way peace of black power to your family thank you guys so much for listening thank you guys for hanging out beloved this is indeed real black content from podcast your brother v i will get up with you guys later beloved peace Thanks for listening. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Anchor, Spotify, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to like, share, and comment on the podcast. Your opinion of what you just heard is important to the platform. So yes, beloved, your comments are the engine and fuel to the machine. Stay blessed and have a powerful day.